Europe has a problem with energy, and winter is coming. What should Europe do now? Keep its citizens in the cold or beg China to mediate with Russia to purchase more natural gas from Russia. Recently, European leaders and Belgium leaders visited China to beg for Russian gas. This is the problem with sanctions. They never work. The European Union's reliance on Russian liquid natural gas, Gaiwa, poses a significant challenge to its energy security and geopolitical interests. The current situation reveals a complex web of economic, political and strategic considerations that tie the EUI to Russia, despite the broader international tensions and the EU's desire for energy independence. Hello and welcome back to Innovative Czech YouTube channel, where we delve into the innovative and transformative projects changing our world. If you're new to the channel and enjoy learning about innovation stories around the world, you've come to the right place. Please subscribe, like and comment to help boost our videos on YouTube. The increasing imports of Russian Lulang into Europe and the United Kingdom, particularly the 20 rise between March and October, indicate a growing dependency on Russia for energy requirements. This is alarming, especially considering the volatile nature of Russia's political and economic actions in the international arena, Moscow's invasion of Ukraine, and the subsequent decline in coal, oil, and natural gas exports to Europe via pipelines, is a testament to Russia's unpredictable energy export strategies. The rising imports of Russian long, especially during gas shortages, make it evident that the EUIUA struggling to diversify its energy sources. Even though the imports of Russian LNG doubled over the past year, amounting to 1.2 million tons, the shipment's value could range between $1 billion and $2 billion and $2 billion. This financial exchange further deepens the EU's, EU's economic ties with Russia. The EU's rush to restock its energy reserves before winter, amidst the reduced pipeline gas flow from Russia, underscores the bloc's vulnerability. Ironically, the global supplies of lung, including those from Russia, have been a crucial alternative. This reliance on Russian lung, primarily sourced from Novatek, poses a strategic dilemma for the UIUE. While the Russian share in the AUS, Union imports has seen a decline since the onset of the war. The European Union still procured 11.8 million tons of lung from Moscow in a span of a few months. This shows a significant increase from the previous year, further highlighting the EAU's growing dependency. The fact that Russia, the world's fourth largest lung producer, constitutes about 15 of Europe's total lung supply, indicates the deep-rooted energy ties between the two entities. Kashal Ramish's statement that Europe is keen to keep these volumes going for as long as possible confirms the EIU's strategic dilemma. However, this growing dependency on Russian lung is fraught with risks. Europe's increasing appetite for Russian lulling makes it susceptible to potential supply cuts from Moscow. The surge in imports contradicts the EUI's ultimate objective of cutting ties with Russian energy, especially considering the political implications of funding Moscow's war efforts. Despite the sanctions, the European Union has refrained from targeting natural gas due to its crucial role in the energy security of member countries, including Germany, and Sophie Corbeu's assertion that the EOU needs Lang and is willing to turn a blind eye on Russian lung points to the bloc's strategic vulnerabilities. Countries like France, Spain, and Belgium, which are major importers of Russian lung, further complicate the ADU's position. The fact that some of these cargoes were redirected to nations outside Europe, including China, underlines the global implications of this energy dependence. The increase in global lung imports into Europe, primarily from the US and Qatar, provides a glimmer of hope for the EIU's energy diversification efforts. The successful restocking initiatives by EIU nations, leading to storage levels reaching 95 capacity, provide some relief. However, the real challenge will emerge in spring when the EU aims to refill its reserves with a diminished supply of Russian pipeline gas. The potential shortfall of 30 billion cubic meters of gas next summer, as highlighted by the International Energy Agency, brings the issue to the forefront. Fatih Bayrol's cautionary statement about the risks associated with Europe's gas supplies emphasizes the EU's precarious position. The continent's dependency on Russian Lang, especially going into the winter of 2023, as stated by Felix Booth, presents a potential geopolitical risk. The possibility of Russia leveraging its LNG exports for political or economic gains is a genuine concern. The complexity surrounding the revenues from Russian Lang sales in Europe the ownership structure of the Yamalang project, and the involvement of international stakeholders like France's Total Energies and Chinese energy firms further convolute the situation. 
the EU's increasing reliance on Russian Lang poses significant strategic, economic, and political challenges. The complex interplay of energy requirements, geopolitical considerations, and economic interests makes this a critical issue for the European Union. The need for diversification, strategic foresight, and a cohesive energy policy has never been more paramount for the EU's future. The EU's energy landscape and its association with Russia is undoubtedly multifaceted. This complex interdependence, which has been forged over decades, stems not just from the EIU's energy requirements, but also from the broader economic and political dynamics at play. Belgium, among other EU countries, has been a noteworthy player in this energy equation. As one of the primary importers of Russian LNG, Belgium's energy policies and decisions carry significant implications for the entire bloc. Belgium, like many other European nations, has been caught in the crossfire of geopolitical tensions between the EU and Russia, especially in the wake of the Ukraine crisis. Yet, its continued imports from Russia signal a pragmatic approach driven by immediate energy needs over longer-term geopolitical considerations. However, this pragmatism has its own set of challenges. By maintaining a steady flow of Russian NG, Belgium indirectly bolsters the Russian economy. This financial support, even if unintended, aids Moscow's broader geopolitical strategies, many of which are at odds with EU, EU interests. Furthermore, Belgium's reliance on Russian energy reduces its leverage in negotiations, not just on energy terms but also in broader diplomatic and economic discussions. The United States, as a critical ally of the EU, EU has a vested interest in the energy security of the bloc. The U.S. has long been vocal about Europe's dependence on Russian energy, particularly given the geopolitical implications. U.S. policymakers have consistently advocated for the diversification of energy sources, emphasizing the potential risks associated with an over-reliance on Russian imports. Or furthermore, the U.S., as a major producer of Lengi, presents an alternative source for Europe. The increased exports of American LNG the AUA, especially in the wake of the decline in Russian pipeline gas, showcases the potential for further collaboration in the energy sector. This not only serves the energy needs of the EUITU, but also aligns with the U.S.'s strategic objective of reducing Russian influence in Europe. If you are enjoying this video so far, please don't forget to subscribe, share the video, and comment. The intricate relationship between the EU and Russia, especially in the energy sector, is a testament to how intertwined geopolitics and economics have become in the modern era. While the EIU aspires to achieve energy independence and reduce its reliance on Russian energy, the ground realities seem to be pulling it in the opposite direction. One of the most significant challenges the EYUA faces is the diversification of its energy sources. While the intent to diversify is clear, achieving this in practice is a Herculean task. The EU's energy infrastructure, which includes pipelines, storage facilities and distribution networks is heavily geared towards traditional suppliers, primarily Russia. Altering this infrastructure to accommodate new suppliers would require significant investment, both in terms of time and money. Moreover, while the EIU has made significant strides in harnessing renewable energy, the transition from fossil fuels is still in its infancy. Wind, solar, and hydroelectric power sources are becoming increasingly prevalent, but the EU's energy grid is still heavily reliant on natural gas, coal, and oil. This dependence on non-renewable energy sources, coupled with the infrastructural challenges mentioned earlier, makes the EIU's quest for energy independence even more daunting. The furthermore, the internal dynamics within the EU add another layer of complexity to this equation. Member states have their own energy policies, priorities, and challenges. Countries like Germany, with its robust industrial base, have different energy needs compared to nations with a more agrarian or service-based economy. This diversity in energy needs and consumption patterns makes a one-size-fits-all approach to energy policy infeasible. Another challenge is the EYUI's commitment to environmental sustainability. The bloc has set ambitious targets for reducing carbon emissions and promoting green energy. However, transitioning to greener energy sources while also reducing reliance on Russian energy is a challenging tightrope walk. The push for green energy might conflict with the immediate need to ensure energy security, especially in the face of potential supply disruptions from traditional suppliers. The economic implications of reducing reliance on Russian energy are also significant. Trade in energy commodities is a significant component of the EU's economic engagement with Russia. Any drastic changes in this trade relationship could have ripple effects on the broader EU economy. Moreover, the EU ice energy companies have significant investments in Russia, and any policy changes could impact their bottom lines. 
Lastly, the geopolitical implications of the EYO synergy policies cannot be ignored. The bloc's relationship with Russia is multifaceted, encompassing various spheres from trade and economy to security and diplomacy. Energy is just one piece of this complex puzzle. Any drastic shifts in energy policy could have broader implications for the EAU's relationship with Russia and might impact other areas of engagement. Gunshetan, in essence, the EU's quest to reduce its energy dependence on Russia is fraught with challenges. While the intent is clear, the path to achieving this is convoluted and riddled with obstacles. It requires a delicate balance between economic imperatives, environmental concerns, infrastructural challenges, and geopolitical considerations. The EU's policymakers have their work cut out for them as they navigate this intricate maze. Thank you for your attention, and I welcome your thoughts and questions on this complex and vital subject. Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If yes, please like and share the video and subscribe to get exclusive videos about how phenomenally China is developing and growing its influence. Your subscriptions and likes motivate us to generate more content, so please keep supporting us. Check out this video showing on your screen right now, and I will see you on the other side.